Hey everybody, welcome to the end portion of the second nine weeks. I wanted to kind of show you real quick what it's going to look like before you go on break again. You only have three weeks of school. So this week is all about George Washington. He is half of the entire era we're going to be doing in two weeks. And then the second week of new learning is um, major events that happen in the next part of that era. So as you can see, we're going to be doing um, new learning for just two weeks. That's it. We'll be doing some review. Um, you'll take your uh, era test for early republic, and then you will um, do some makeup work, grade checks, and you are done for not only the second nine weeks, um, but for um, for a while because you have a two-week break. So this is what it's going to look like. I know my calendar is not done in the classroom, but here it is right here. So um, let's get started. You should have this packet in front of you. If not, your teacher can pause the video and make sure you get this packet with the blue cover. Right now, all of you look down and put your first, last name, and class period on it right now. As we speak, double, triple check first name and your last name and, very important, your class period. Okay, here is this era. Here are all the topics of learning. Here are the first five presidents. Um, <clears throat> we do not learn president by president. That is just not wow history kind of works. I mean, yes, these presidents happen in order, but it is what are the major events that happened during the presidencies of these um, first five people? Sometimes the event is bigger than the person itself. So we more or less talk about the event, not who was president at that time. Uh, George Washington, though, is the most popular of those five. So he is half of this entire era. So half of what we learn is just events about him and during his presidency. And then the other half is split between all of these people. Okay, I'm going to try and give you a really quick review of where we are so far, and I'm going to try and do this in 60 seconds. Um, I don't know. I could completely fail, so this is going to be really fast. Look, I'm even going to bring in a timer so we can see if I totally fail at this or not. So here we go. I'm going to review with you in 60 seconds what we've done so far this year. Let me make sure this works, this little tool. Okay. Okay. It does. I don't know if this is going to stay up there, so we'll see. Okay. Um, here we go. So there is, um, I'm not going to be able to do this in 60 seconds. Okay. So you have North and South America right here. Oh, you know, that looks bad. Uh, and then you have Europe over here. <clears throat> we had Lots of powerful countries. They explored. They found new land. They claimed it. Great Britain happened to claim an area about right here. We called it the 13 colonies. They moved people over. Um, the 13 colonies established different economies. They grew. They changed. Europe really didn't care about them until after the French and Indian War when they – uh, I'm sorry, not just Europe, but Great Britain started to tax the colonists, and the colonists got mad because they didn't have representation. That led to the American Revolution. The 13 colonies turned into the United States of America because they won that revolution. Um, then these colonists um, that are now Americans wrote a um, – new form of government called the Articles of Confederation since they got rid of Great Britain. This was absolutely horrific. So then they wrote the United States Constitution, which is much better. All of the 13 states approved the Constitution, so they put it in place. One of the new parts of the Constitution was, well, first off, it still had the legislative branch, but it added the executive branch and a judicial branch. So now we have to fill these spots and fill these spots, which the most popular, and again, don't get confused popularity and power, the most popular spot would be the president. And that is a new position in uh, the United States government. So um, they have to elect a president. That is where we start the early republic era, which is uh, where we are today. Okay, um, look, see, I did that horribly. I'm past the time. <laughs> um, that was a horrible review, but at least it kind of gives you an idea of kind of where we are today. We are to where we are electing a president, and I think we all know who that's going to be. So if y'all could all turn to this very first page in your packet, Washington takes office, the presidential office. Almost all my students, I think 99.9% .9 all know Washington is the very first president of the United States. Okay. 
Um, we're going to look at his leadership qualities today. Um, and um, let's see, a rebellion he dealt with. And we're going to compare the two rebellions because we already learned about one because y'all confused that. Um, and that's it. So actually today is pretty basic. So let's get started. Um, I need the person on the right-hand side. No, I'm going to read this to you. Here we go. In 1789, George Washington was inaugurated or introduced or admitted as the nation's first president after taking the oath of office. As president, Washington guided the new government as it applied the Constitution. Washington faced several challenges. He had to define the authority or control of the new central government, create a stable economy, build a military, maintain national security, and build relationships with foreign countries. Jeez, this man as first president had a lot to do. He's the first president. He had, I mean, he had a list, a long list. Okay, I need you to talk like a historian and not say, what does that mean? All right, let's define inaugurated. They're all here in parentheses. I'm going to give you all 60 seconds to find these words inside the paragraph and write down the definition given to you in parentheses. You have 60 seconds to do that now. Go, and your teacher can pause the video. Okay. So you should have um, all of that. Inaugurated means to be introduced. So George Washington was introduced as president. We still do that today with every single president. It's a big formal thing, big deal. Stable. That means you're steady and secure. If you are unstable, that means, you know, you're off balance. Things are not good. Foreign, we've talked about this before. We'll talk about this word a lot this era. This is going to be countries outside the U.S., other countries. And then oath. That is, is I put that in here? Hmm. Did I leave that one out? Stable, inaugurated, foreign. I left it out, didn't I? Um, oath is a promise. So go ahead right here and write promise. An oath is a promise. Put that in. Okay. There we go. All right. I'm going to, uh, you're going to watch this video real quickly and you're going to answer these questions. Okay. So, so far we know George Washington has been inaugurated as president. He's promised to follow this brand new constitution, which we haven't even seen in action yet, besides the fact that he's now president. Um, so let's see a reenactment of him actually taking the oath of office, which was like an extremely famous time. So we're going to watch that right now.
Okay, that is all done now. We're going to go back to your packet. Um, so describe Washington's tone of voice during the inauguration. Did you notice what people were saying? Oh, I guess I should close this out real quick. Hold on, let me find that video. It's hiding somewhere. Okay, sorry about that. So, um, what was the tone of the voice? Was it loud? Was it nervous? It was quiet. So, um, people think he's like this tall military man. He must be loud and tough. No, his voice was very quiet. People couldn't even hear. So, you would, uh, we read that in letters that people would write. And we know that through history. Uh, how does the crowd respond to Washington? Pick a word. I mean, they're cheerful, they're excited. I mean, this is the first president ever of the United States of America. No longer is it a group of guys under under the AOC of Congress that one group is in charge. We now have a face of America, I guess you could say. And they were very excited. So um, you're going to um, read this next part right here. Um, let's go ahead and have the person on the right-hand side read this out loud. You have 30 seconds, and I want you all to answer number seven. So do that now. Um, the teacher can pause the video. Okay, once reading this, it says, which of the following characteristics describes George Washington as president? Circle the, um, the ones that apply. Hopefully, um, based on what you read, you should have understanding circled, and you should have respected circled. He never seemed angry. He was not revengeful of anyone. Um, he wasn't revengeful of uh, other countries, even Great Britain. He was. This man was... Um, known to be understanding, a great listener. He was so well respected. Okay, so it's great. George is president. He's got a list of things, as you can see, that um, need to be done. Um, so let's, he's going to get to most of them, but he has a challenge. Now we're going to look at evidence of his leadership and determine what characteristics of his leadership he demonstrated during his presidency, more specifically, how he demonstrated leadership during an event called the Whiskey Rebellion. And yes, whiskey is the grown-up drink. And at this time, it was mainly made by farmers. So the farmers are going to rebel again. Remember, rebel is uh, to go against the rules. So here's what you are going to do. You are going to, let's have the person on the left-hand side. You are going to read this first paragraph. And you and your partner will answer one and two. Then we'll do the right-hand side. You are going to, so look, we're going to do the left, the right, and the left, and the right. And so y'all are going to switch off reading that out loud because reading out loud is proven to make you smarter. It's very helpful. If you don't know a word or can't pronounce it, who cares? Um, skip it and just keep reading, okay? And then y'all are going to answer these questions um, once you are done um, with the reading. So right now the teacher can pause the video and take about two to three minutes to complete this part. Pause that video now. Okay, so blank had to pay a new tax on whiskey. You should have farmers had to pay a new tax on whiskey. What happened if the farmers refused to pay um, that tax? Uh, your farm could be taken. Your farm could be taken. How do the farmers show their anger? So they tarred and feathered tax collectors. We remember this in uh, the American Revolution. That's actually, it's hot tar. It's actually painful. Um, and then they poured feathers on them as a way of embarrassment. Um, and then they protested. And that, you know, that was their way of protesting. Okay, um, what was Washington's first step in controlling the angry farmers? So this is what I love. First, George, he's going to try, uh, it says, a refusal of any citizen to pay their taxes is a threat on the government. It was also a threat on the Constitution, and George said he will protect the Constitution. So at first, it says he talked with the rebels. This is your answer to the first part. What is his first step? He talked to the rebels, the angry farmers. Okay, because he's George. He's going to, you know, we're not under AOC. 
okay, the Articles of Confederation, we have a strong constitution now, and it's only going to work if citizens do what they're told. And so he is then talks about, look, I understand you're upset, but you know what? Unlike under the AOC, where farmers rebelled because they didn't want to pay a tax, now we are not going to be an embarrassment of a government. You have to pay your taxes so that we can pay our military, so that we can get things done in our country, so that we can grow. Um, that did not work. It said the talks went badly. Ultimately, how did Washington stop the farmer? So this is why I love George. First, he's going to be calm and sweet, and he's going to talk it out with you. And then after that, he is going to say he's not going to send 1,000 troops, not 5,000, not 10,000, 13,000. There's only 5,000 rebels. He is going to send 13,000 troops. Holy cannoli. He's like, okay, you don't want to talk it out? All right. You can, we'll, we'll do it the tough way. So how did he stop the farmers? He sent 13,000 troops. Guess what? This man is the same man who um, stopped Great Britain. We're talking General George Washington of the American Revolution was in charge to help stop Great Britain. You think he is worried about stopping farmers? No. So guess what you do when George Washington and his troops come at you? You drop your weapons and you pay your taxes and gee golly, that's exactly what happened. So ultimately, how did he stop the farmers? He sent 30,000 troops. The Whiskey Rebellion proved the federal government was what? Still weak or strong? You have 10 seconds. Circle one. We should have already done that. Your answer is strong. If you did not write that, then cross the other one out and circle strong. Okay. Primary source two is actually, um, this is a letter to Benjamin Harris. Don't have to worry about who that is. And it's from Washington. So we have another one, just like we saw uh, his Valley Forge letter. We get to read words from George Washington's mouth. And I like to read this. The unwillingness of the individual states to submit to the federal government. Their unreasonable jealousy of that body and one, of, uh, one another will, if there is no change in the system, be the downfall of our nation. This is as clear to me as ABC. Those came out of Washington's mouth. That's his words. So he is saying, you know, the states act like different countries, like jealous. Oh, well, Virginia has this or does this. No, Pennsylvania this, and they have this. No. Uh, he says we need to act like one country, and you will submit to the federal government because no, all these laws that are passed are passed because by your representatives, and you need. we have to follow the rules to be an organized, successful country, or else we just won't be. It'll all go away. I'm sorry for the typo. This should not say Shushington. It should say Washington on your paper, so I apologize. Based on the statement, does he believe in a strong national government or weak? Does George believe? So Washington believes in a strong or weak national government based on this. I'll give you 30 seconds to write strong national government or write weak national government. Go. Okay, the correct answer is strong national government. That is what you should have. He does, because he believes you should follow the laws of the federal government. Because, heck, you made them. I mean, you voted on representatives to make these laws. So we must follow them, or else we will not survive as a country. Okay, um, so that is your Whiskey Rebellion. But here's what happens. I have to stop before we go on any more lear new learning. We had Shay's Rebellion and Whiskey Rebellion, and y'all confused the two. So, what type of government was in action during this rebellion? The Shay's Rebellion. Now, remember, Shay's Rebellion was back in Massachusetts. We had angry farmers. They did not want to pay the high taxes, and so they rebelled. And it, I mean, there was no strong federal government. We had no one military. We had no president to call along. So, really, Shay's Rebellion, I mean, Rebels won. And so you're going to see how this is totally opposite. So under what type of government, what type of government did we have under Shays' Rebellion? And it is Articles of Confederation. Remember, there's no president. We have a one-branch government. What type of government do we have under Whiskey Rebellion? Because it happens right after George is president. We have the Constitution. Remember, these are our only two. These are both constitutions. We've only, we've had two uh, this is the one we still have today. This is the one we had for a short time because it didn't work. 
So you're going to draw your tree. Draw the one branch tree with just legislative branch. And then draw your three branch tree right here um, correctly. And the teacher can pause the video so you can do that. Okay. Why uh, were the Massachusetts fam farmers angry? This one, look, ah, Massachusetts. Why are they angry? Taxes. Why were the farmers angry um, in Pennsylvania? Taxes. Was it difficult to control these farmers? Yes. And then why? Because we, multiple reasons, because we had a weak federal government. And here is the opposite. Was it difficult to control the farmers? Eh, kind of at first, but not really. Uh, no, because we have a strong federal government. No, because we had a strong federal government, meaning this time we had a president, we, um, we had more organization, we had a national military. Who ended this rebellion under Shays Rebellion? Was it George Washington and the U.S. military or a militia, meaning just an untrained military funded by private citizens? Remember, those Massachusetts people were like, dude, these people are shooting up our businesses. And they were able to stop those farmers. And then who ended the rebellion under Whiskey Rebellion? It's going to be George Washington and the U.S. military. And then did people in the United States take the federal government seriously during this rebellion? The answer is no, because the federal government was, again, weak. And then did the federal government take the, uh, did the United States take the federal government seriously after this rebellion? Yes, because the federal government was strong and they were able to stop it. So really these answers in this box just travel right back over here, except this is no, it wasn't serious because it was weak and they were able to stop it here. Yes, because the federal government was strong. I just don't want you to confuse those. Okay. All right, last thing you need to do is um, just complete these two sentences. Use your notes, word it however you would like to complete this. Um, you're successful today if you basically understand George Washington was the first president who had a long list of things to do. He was the first inaugurated president. Um, he was very understanding. He was very respectful. He had great leadership during the Whiskey Rebellion because he was able to put a fast stop to it. I need you to know that George believed in a strong federal government. And please remind yourself about Shay's Rebellion that we learned about in the AOC um, and then compare that to Whiskey Rebellion. So please answer this. And that is the end for today. George Washington is now president, and darn was he a good leader during the Whiskey Rebellion.